my name is Andrews, and I'm the co-writer and director of Save Yourself. I'm Chris Cole, and I was uh, co-story creator along with Ryan, and uh, producer and editor. Well, basically, uh, Chris and I were driving with our previous film to Oklahoma for a film festival, and you know we're spitballing ideas back and forth. We pulled over, you know, middle of the night. Uh, Chris had to go take a leak. And I'm left to stand there alone, and I just realized if he doesn't come back, I'm in trouble. And I couldn't get a signal on my phone, so it's, there's an idea for a story. So the rest of the drive, we wanted to come up with something different and kind of do it in more of an intellectual way, a kind of more sophisticated way, especially with the idea of the mad scientist, which, you know, I haven't seen a great mad scientist story in a long time. And I, you know, I grew up on Dr. Fives, Dr. Caligari. I love, you know, that kind of concept. So wanting to play with the mad scientist I want to bring back that sophistication that you had with Vincent Price and actors like that show the intelligence side of horror and we approached it in that style you know we wanted to do something different we thought about where does this story progress we said okay well let's take it in a couple of different directions and the angle I won't say what it is um, <laughs> you have to see the film <laughs> that's you know something that maybe hasn't been seen too many times before and that's the direction we went with we write scripts normally pretty quickly and then, you know, rewrite them five or six times until we get them right. For me, like, I grew up as a kid in the 80s watching horror films. You know, that's when I first saw Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, all the classics. And the idea of the final girl in the films, guys never defeated the monster. It was, there was never that guy character fighting the evil monster. It was always a woman. And it wasn't, the woman was never saved by a boyfriend. The girl has to save herself. And the girl, for me growing up as a kid, it was always the women are the strong ones. The women are the ones who can defeat the monster. If you're a boyfriend in a film, you are dead. <laughs> so having that mentality growing up, when I became a writer, I was just always, the women are the strong characters. And if we're gonna write a story, I wanna show some kick-ass characters, then they gotta be women. So we have these five women going on a road trip and they're, you know, the story is about these five female filmmakers. The director of the film kind of parallels me if I was a woman, you know, who knows, but, you know, I think there's little elements, wish. yeah, <laughs> I think there's little elements of uh, myself and people I know within the characters, but most importantly with those characters, we always want to have fun with them. You talked about how we parallel the idea that these women show up stereotypes of women in horror, which, which we always knew from day one and we wanted to play with, you know, we always wanted to take that and turn it around where you typically see the bitch character and you're like, oh, the bitch character is going to die. Well, you know what? I'm going to make you cheer for that character. I'm going to make you want to see that character survive. I'm going to make you want to see them live because the thing I hate most is stereotypes to begin with. And then we'll kill them anyway. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things we like to do because you see these characters like, the, you know, the self-conscious director. We've seen that character before, almost always the man. There's been so many movies done before and oftentimes just that gender switch it's a whole different story now we're seeing it from a from a point of view that we don't often get to see it from right and it just makes it more interesting well i never wanted to uh stack the deck and have all these women that have been in dozens and dozens of films i just wanted you know the right character uh, the right actor for the right role and as we were you know casting it just ended up it's like oh my god we got this person from this film and we got this person from this film like with jessica cameron I've known her for a very long time, and from day one, I wanted to have her involved with this film, wanted her to be in it, I wanted her to also be a producer on it as well. And so when that came through, it was great. And then Tiana Nori, I had never known. She played Sasha in the film. She actually came in with our casting director to read with everybody auditioning. And so, you know, I spent the day with her watching her read with everybody, and she was distracting because it's like, oh man, she's doing such a good job. And she was trying to scale it back. and. It just became that thing of, you know what, no, she has to audition. So when we did our callbacks, I made her come in and audition. And with Tristan Risk, I had recently seen her in American Mary. And she sold the show. I mean, American Mary is a great film, but the character of Beatrice uh, was just so awesome. And we could actually get her and bring her up to Toronto and shoot with her. It was like, oh, yeah, we got to add her. And then finally, you know, I looked at the entire cast. I mean, Rye Barrett as villain with... Elma Begovic, who most recently did the movie Bite, and then it's them against these five women, Tiana Nori, Jessica Cameron, Tristan Riss, Kaylee Legrand, and Laura Mikosi. Wow, th this is like a really strong cast. And then on top of that, even for a cameo in the film, we got Bobby Phillips, 
you know, Bobby Phillips was the first female pro in the pro series. She was also in Wes Craven's Carnival of Souls, a lot of other TV shows. And she, that was just like a great cameo. And so it's like there were no throwaway roles where it's just like, okay, we just need somebody, find somebody. We just had such a solid cast. Mm -hmm. It excited me more having this strong cast equally passionate about it. It gave me the confidence to say, okay, let's do this. And they pushed me, I pushed them, and I think we got a great film for it. You know, there's a really popular saying, fix it in post. And, you know, the correct version is fix it in prep. And that's what we do. When we got together with Post City Films, uh, Pino Halili and Al Ormerod, and we started putting everything together, uh, we brought in Mitch Lackey, who's, uh, who's a great writer as well, and he came on board to make sure every T was crossed, every I was dotted, and the script was perfect. Every chance to go grab a coffee, I'd be like getting together with somebody just so we could talk about the characters. And with Ry Barrett, who plays the mad scientist in the film, before we even had any money, I was like, you're playing this role, so start researching. And so he had like a year to research that character, and he got really deep into it. He, he never knew any German or how to do a German accent, never did before, and a lot of practice, a lot of rehearsing, and it was, it was great having everybody else on board with that. Uh, Michael Davidson, my cinematographer, there were many times where we would get together and come up with how the lensing and the framing and the color palette of the film could help project the story. That we wanted the, the lensing and framing to complement the story being told, and you know, we chose to shoot it anamorphic. We shot primarily on one lens, 40 millimeter, and then 75 for the close-ups, to have this visual cohesion, especially with such a huge ensemble cast. We want to just kind of set up this painting for you, and you can watch the actors work within it. And so by having you know, the anamorphic uh, frame for it, it kind of gave the actors room. And all this stuff was decided in pre-production, making sure everything's ready to go, especially because we didn't have a long shoot. Uh, yeah. And it actually shot. got shorter as we were shooting. But we started yeah, with 14 <laughs> days and then lost a day. For... Well, we start, We wanted to do 14 yeah. because we couldn't do the 16, uh, just with time restraints and people's schedules. So it got dropped down to 14, and then... The location that we had booked, that there was a miscommunication with them. And they were going on holiday. So it's like, all right, so we then we, did, then we lost another day on this, so we did it in 12 days. Yes, yeah. but, but one of the biggest things about those 12 days is also we weren't doing 20-hour days. We did 12, 12 on, 12 off of 12 days. Because, you know, for me, I want the best from the actors. And if they, you know, they could do a 20-hour day and go home and come back. But if you're, like, going six days in a row doing 20 hour days, your body's gonna break down. And I don't care how good you are, if your body is not healthy, you cannot be as good as you can be. So for any film I do, I want it to be a 12 on 12 off day. You just work better that way. And luckily our uh, first AD, Charles Smith, he was a stickler for that as yeah. well. And he was on my ass about he had, that. He had such a tough job that to schedule everything and he did, you did fantastically yeah. well to do all that, yeah. Another thing about the 12 hour days is that we were actually shooting out about an hour outside of Toronto. So most people were driving the set, right? So Emma, uh, our producer, Emma Jean Sutherland was very, very keen to make sure that everybody got enough time to drive home, have a sleep and drive back so we'd be safe. I think that regimented schedule helped keep everybody did, yeah. in line because there's always going to be things that go wrong on a film set. Yeah, you know, I'm sure even $50 million budgeted films have problems. Yeah. Any issues that arose, you know, we took care of immediately mm -hmm. and everybody was on top of it. And I think that's because everybody was, you know, happy to be there every day and everybody was well rested. Yeah. And so anytime an issue arose, it was quickly you know, squash. Yeah. So. And the good thing also about that, you know, you treat your crew with respect and, and, and you have their safety in mind that the two or three days that we did actually shoot an hour later, they were all for it. The guy was sweating about how everybody was going to get home. <laughs> the, the house flooded one day. Uh, we got to set in the basement of the house we were shooting in was flooded. <laughs> we spent we spent about six hours trying to soak up the thing. It wasn't just, okay, well, we'll just rearrange the schedule. It was the last day that Jessica Cameron was on set. She was flying out the very next morning, and we still had to shoot a scene with her in that basement. We get to set, and it rained the night before, and the basement flooded, so it's like, we have to shoot in here. There was know, about three inches of water over the entire basement. It, was, it wasn't was a little flood at all. It was huge. Yeah. When I showed up uh, on set, you know, it's like I remember, you know, I talked to Chris, and he's like, yeah, this is what happened. I'm like, this is what we're going to do, right? And we just, you know, rearranged the schedule of the day, and... 
got a few people taking care of the cleaning up the flooding while we were shooting out in the barn and by the end of the day and it was still a 12-hour day but by the time we wrapped Jessica was done and on a plane the next day and we had all the footage so I think we always meet every obstacle and overcome it because of having such a well-oiled machine yeah. I think the Canadian horror scene is like really thriving right now because we really support each other. It's kind of really incestual because, you know, we all work with the same crew, we all work with the same cast, and we all help lift each other up and we support everybody else's work. Um, like it's one big family, uh, Gavin Michael Booth, who did the Scare House, uh, myself, um, Chad Archibald, uh, Chris G, Cody Callahan from uh, Black Fawn Films, uh, Audrey Cummings as well, she's awesome, and even on the West Coast, you have Karen Lamb and you have Luchagor, who had this great brand new short film, which is screened at the New York Horror Film Festival, and also obviously Jen Sylvia as well, uh, kind of leading the way. Trisha Lee is another great up and coming uh, director. We all really support each other's back, and you know, as for why we have all this stuff going on in Canada. I mean, I think it goes on everywhere. I think anywhere you have someone who's passionate about horror, you have good horror films getting made. The support that we have in Canada actually, I think, is everywhere. Like coming mm -hmm. to New York here for the New York Horror Film Festival, uh, it's the same support from all the other filmmakers here. And, it, you know, these filmmakers are not just local to here. They're coming from Austin, Texas. They're coming from overseas. I think we just have, like, this love of the genre where we all believe passionately in it. I mean, you know, nobody is going around showing their films in these film festivals, paying to get out to these places because they want to make a million dollars. Everybody is here at this festival because they love horror. The indie horror scene is such a great supportive group of people. Our fans too are, yeah. are super supportive. Horror fans are the best. No. They love their horror, they love their genre, and they're always willing to say they forgive you for if you don't have the biggest budget as long as you're telling a good story and there's you know there's lots of gore and as much as i despise social media the reality is it's a filmmaker's best friend the resurge in the past five years of the canadian horror scene is because we're able to promote ourselves we don't have that kind of money so we need to use social media to help promote our films and thanks to things like facebook twitter instagram people can hear about it and fans are so passionate and the horror community is so you know giving to helping each other that it allows us to to get the word out there about our stuff you know? oh this is great well this is the first time i've been to new york a few times as a tourist this is the first time we've come with a, a new york premiere in manhattan for our film and it was so exciting even before we got here we were excited we didn't know what we were getting into is we have never been to the new york horror film festival before and uh, it's been great so far. We had a great turnout for the show. Everybody seemed to really enjoy the film, and we've had a, such a warm welcome from the people running the festival as well. Not having been in New York City proper before, if anything, I think I was intimidated because <laughs> I grew up, you know, obviously watching Jason Voorhees. I grew up watching Friday the 13th, Last House on the Left, knowing that Sean Cunningham was going to be here receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award. But beyond that, Tony Timpone, uh, who was the editor-in-chief for Fangoria Magazine for 35 years or so. You know, he is part of this as well, and he helped me get my start in film, whether he realizes it or not. He influenced me, he encouraged me. Um, like, I did an interview with him in 1997 when I was in college, and when I did my first short film, I sent it to him like a kid, like, oh, you guys watch my movie, you know? And he actually took the time to write me back, and his words of encouragement helped me have the confidence to continue with this. My first feature that I did, Tony helped get that played on Fangoria TV. And so I've never met him until coming to the New York Horror Film Festival. And it was such a huge honor to be able to meet this guy who influenced me, whether he realizes it or not. So coming down here, there was such a, you know, it's New York City. and. You know, we come from mini New York, Toronto, right? Like, we're just the smaller, cleaner, politer version of this place. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's like coming down here, I was like so kind of actually, like, I don't want to say scared, but, you know, I, I was really nervous. You were scared. Like, you were scared. Oh, yeah, I was terrified. Uh, but, you know, I was really nervous about wanting to 
not just screen my movie and hope people will come out and hope you know people will like it but also I, I hope these people will welcome me you know like I, I hope I can be welcomed into the family here you know I want to put in a good impression and everybody here has been so amazing um, it's just like the horror community in Canada it's just like the horror indie community anywhere where you know everybody here it's like they welcome you with a hug and you know I, I couldn't ask for anything more so I love it